Hey guys, Scott for Dummies here. Or Happy Sunday. Happy what are we Sunday. Doing on Sunday. Hey man, you know what we're doing on Sunday? We're going to interview a special guest, and that's why we do it on Sundays. Excited about it. Uh, we're missing two. We are. And we're missing one that's important. He's our tech guy, but I think that <laughs> me and this guy got this figured out. We're going to do what we can. It doesn't matter if we've got to figure it out because we got a great guest. We and do. I think she's going to carry the content we're going to talk about. Um, it actually fits really good with what we want to do anyway, what the show is about. It's about educating people and helping yes. them understand their scotch purchases. And the only way to do that is to understand, understand whiskey, yes. right? We've been talking about it for six years, Andrew. Yeah, so <laughs> our, our education is informal. We started drinking whiskey. We started liking this. We tried this. We tried that. We started meeting some people. We learned from them. We Then we found some topics that were like, that's really unusual. Let's dive down deeper into that. And so we go to online and search for things. But there is a probably more efficient way to do that. There's a much more efficient way to do that. <laughs> and our guest today is going to teach us and talk about what that efficient way is. So from the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, we've got the founder. Um, her name is Kirsty McCarrow. And welcome to the show. You're welcome. in Scotland. You're in the motherland right now. Yes. Hi. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for having me come on. Uh, so, yeah, no, at the moment I'm up in the Highlands in uh, very close to Royal Loch Nagar Distillery in a very small village called Braemar. Uh, I kind of wish we could be there in person to interview you, to be honest. That would be, that would be nice. <laughs> Are they allowed business? Soon, there? hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, soon. Think, uh, I think it's uh, soon. I think it will be allowed. I'm not sure. I think it all depends on the vaccine rate, but uh, hopefully oh, yeah. not too long. Things are opening up a bit, right? I mean, definitely. You're by. Thank goodness. Well, yep. I can tell no. you, if we were there in person, you'd be cracking open that Highland Park behind you. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I know. See these bottles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, I know. I've brought a few interesting ones just for background. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you before we talk about the Academy. What, uh, who are you and why did you bring this Academy to reality? Why did you choose to do this? Because you didn't come, well, you sort of came from a whiskey background, but not your profession, right? No, or maybe. Uh, no, no. Uh, well, I've grown up around whiskey uh, from both my mother and my father's side. Um, but actually, I've spent most of my career working as a paramedic. Um, but a move to Sweden and the, the arrival of our first child sort of prompted me to reevaluate things. And it was at that time that I thought, well, I have this, uh, you know, sort of whiskey background. I'm really passionate about whiskey. And so I started my own whiskey tasting business. And then a couple of months after doing that, I got offered the brand ambassador role for Glenmorangie and Gennard Beg in, in the Nordics. And it was really during that time that I sort of realized that there was a big void in whiskey education because I'd been given fantastic brand training on both Glenmorangie and Ardbeg, but my fundamental knowledge wasn't, wasn't up to scratch. And I wanted to learn much more about the production process, you know, the, the sort of ins and outs behind it all that, that then would allow me to put my brand training on top of it and really offer a great tasting. So I, I looked around for whiskey education courses that, you know, to suit my needs. And there really weren't any around. They were either sort of on the distilling side, as if I wanted to become a distiller like Harriet Watt and IBD and stuff, or they were much more, much more lightweight things. And so when we returned to Scotland in 2015, I decided to create this academy and really try and push the, the you know, the, the standard of whiskey education and, and create a course that was suited to that, basically um, that middle market that had been largely ignored. But if you go back, your family history's got whiskey in it, right? So whiskey's kind of in your bloodline. That's true. <laughs> yes. No, I, uh, so, well, I actually had my first whiskey nosing, not tasting, aged eight. Um, but because my father was, when I was growing up, he was the CEO of Glenmorangie. And it was under his sort of tenure that they instigated their cradle to grave philosophy. And they also released the first wood finish range, which, as we all know, sort of revolutionized the industry and created a whole new category. Um, so he used to bring home samples, which we would nose. And that really got me interested in the flavor from a very you know obviously from a childish perspective but it was very exciting um, and then also on my mother's side she's a McKinley and McKinley started uh, distilling whiskey in the 1820s and although the brand no longer exists some of your listeners may have heard of it because 
I think it was back in 2005, a team of New Zealand explorers were retracing Ernest Shackleton's steps of his ill-fated uh, endurance mm. expedition. And oh, it was wow. on this that they found one of these, uh, one, of, one of his food dumps. And, and in these food dumps, there were three crates of McKinley's blended malt whiskey literally frozen in time so it was a very sort of exciting find and we've been brought over by white and Mackay. so they flew richard patterson over to take one of these bottles and he brought it back and uh, basically deconstructed it and then reconstructed it as much as possible the same because obviously a lot of those malts that had been yeah, used no, no. were no longer in existence he still did a pretty fine job because we enjoyed a bottle we of did. it. <laughs> that bottle yeah. went way too fast because it was just—it yeah. was such a great balance of the, of the kind of the, little bit of peat, a little bit of sweet. I mean, it's just—it was a really well blended. Yeah, yeah. very it tasty. Was. Yeah. So we do have a couple of people that I believe you may know in the chat. So uh, Eric Wait from Whiskey okay. Studies, he's got another Whiskey Tube channel. Uh, he's actually taken some of your courses, I believe. Um, so, he's a. a, a, a sommelier a wine sommelier by yeah. by trade so i think um it was a really an easier move for him to get into the the whiskey background but he did take some of your uh, yep. your courses and we have gone through one of your courses as well and we we'll did. get into just what those courses are but tell me a little bit more about the academy itself um you know where are you located and and what how do you provide your content where does your content come from so I think um, it's a really good question because a couple of things were really paramount to me when I created the Academy. And one was that all content was created and delivered by the industry experts, the people who actually do the job. They're all um, now independent consultants, so it's completely brand neutral. There's no marketing slant on any of the information. Right. And okay. we have a, a large body of experts who we call on to create the different modules um, for, for the different courses. Um, the, the courses are taught. You've got a picture there of Arniston House, which is a, a gorgeous historic house just 10 miles south of Edinburgh. It's very close to Glen Kinchy Distillery, if anyone's been to Glen Kinchy. And we teach them there that the, the two face-to-face -face courses we have, the Diploma in Single Malt and the Diploma in the Art of Tasting, are both taught at Arniston. And it's a great venue because obviously you're steeped in history. Sir Walter Scott wrote about drinking whiskey there with the, the Dundas, the owner of the house at that time. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful location that's really suited to learning the ins and outs of, of Scotch. It's a gorgeous location. Yeah, is, yeah. But in today's day and age, especially with what happened to the world last year, <laughs> you're also providing online content. I mean, you've had to, yeah. to accept that. And, and it's actually beneficial for folks like us here in the states that i can't get to that house readily <laughs> yeah so you, you do both yeah so we have um we do have some online courses we have the certificate in scotch whiskey uh we which we launched just over a year ago we've got the certificate in irish whiskey which we launched in march and we're really excited to launch at the end of this month the diploma in single malt whiskey in an online version um so we've now got three very different courses, all of which are fully accessible online and all of which teach very different uh, levels of detail. And so I put on the screen here a, a slide from basically the the main topics of the certificate in single malt. It's very yeah. And so yeah. kind of go through why you pick these eight primary um, areas. Areas, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you call yeah. them, but so yeah, we, we call them modules. Um, Modular, but, there you go. Yeah. So the certificate in Scotch whiskey is sort of our first tier of education. And it goes through the all, all the courses follow a similar format with, with slight differences. Um, but we start with the history, you learn the history a bit about the history of distillation, how it became such a big industry in, in Scotland. You look at illicit distillation before you move on and understand the business of whiskey, which very much looks at the key export markets, the issues surrounding Scotch at the moment mm -hmm. through counterfeiting or, or trade barriers. Um, and obviously, then we move on to the raw materials where we look at the key ingredients we look at the different categories of scotch and the laws that are uh, assigned to each different category. And then we go on to the production process, which is primarily 
malting barley, milling and fermentation before we move on to batch distillation. And you that learn there a lot about the impact of the on, on flavor of the different still shapes, the angle of the line arm, the, the, the rate of distillation, the volume in the still. So that's all very much about, uh, obviously about distillation, but how it can affect the flavor. And then maturation, we break down the different components that are in American oak and European oak. We look at the difference right. in toasting and charring um, and the different warehousing methods. Also the climate, how that can affect uh, mm -hmm. maturation rate. Sure. Bottling, is uh, you know the, the bottling how chill filtration uh, reducing the ABV and then grain distillation talks about continuous distillation and the different processes in that and then we look at blending and very much on you know the skill of the blender we look at packing malts other ele elements like that there's a ton of content I yes. mean, honestly, the, 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 the course does cover A to Z uh, from what I went through, the, the course that I went through, mm -hmm. which was the single malt. And, uh, and there's a certificate at the end. But let me ask you a question in, in regards to your courses. There's two different pieces to the question. Number one, <clears throat> you are accredited. So there's an accreditation process here and an accreditation, accrediting body, if you will. But are, are you also close with the SWA? Um, are, are they involved? Or are they interested in your content and what you do and what you provide? Because I think it's a very important piece that they need to con to take into consideration, which is the education piece. Um, they're very protective of Scotch, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. They're much more on the sort of lobbying side and uh, sort of political protecting the the name side than the education. But we have um, we are in discussions with the SWA, but unfortunately, due to their their setup, they can't be seen to favour one organisation over another. So they okay. are not involved in our courses at all, other than we get on very well with them, and they we are we do feature on their um, suggested education courses. Um, but that that's very much sort of, it's more a, a friendly relationship as opposed to they are you know out and out supporters of us just because they're not allowed to be. Um, but sure. like you say, we are we are accredited. It's We're accredited by the SQA and they are the Scottish Qualifications Authority. So they're the um, part of the Scottish government that is responsible for certifying and accrediting pretty much all exams and qualifications in Scotland out with universities. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So they're and, actually a government body? Yeah, so they're... They're part of the Scottish government, but they're not, they're non-governmental in that they're not elected or anything like that. Okay. But they they run Scottish exams, but not universities. So like for all all professional professions, they they would have anybody that's an accredited paramedic or accredited firefighter or anything like that, they would go through SQA courses. Is that um I'm not sure paramedic is is slightly well, different. But so yeah. but they, I guess that, that what I meant by that is there's a, um, I know in Indiana and the USA, we've got a professional licensing board um, that certifies right. engineers and those kind of things. And you have to pass their tests mm -hmm. to be able to be a certified yeah. engineer, those kind of things. It's, it's, is it a similar kind of organization in Scotland? Um, I think bodies like accountancy and, you know, medicine, all sure. of that, that they have, their, they have their own um, sort of head certifying board but if you yeah. wanted to go and become you know do a vocation like you know a lot there are a lot of distilling qualifications that are certified okay. by the sqa plumbing you know that type of thing equally okay. when you're when you're at school and you take your gcses or whatever it is nvqs right. whatever uh standard grades then that's all the sqa okay so when I looked at your content, and obviously I went through one of the courses, and I see the courses that are out there, there's a couple of things before we get into the courses that I want to point out to people. And you guys actually have free resources on your website. Uh, I've downloaded some of them. I actually need to look at one of them because it's how to pronounce uh, Scotch whiskey <laughs> properly. And, and I butcher the vast majority of the ones that it's I Isley, do. Right? <laughs> it's Isley, right? It's Isley. It's Isley, <laughs> right. Um, so I want to point people to that, you know, to check out the website and at least take advantage of the free resources uh, because it's a great starting point. I, I really wish we would have had that um, when we started job, yeah. <laughs> um, because what, you know, our on the job training, if you will, and just learning this on our own, 
one thing that's really been beneficial and it's another thing that you guys offer is an alumni network. So we've sort of built a community network of people that have really helped us grow and learn and, and share with, and you actually, as being an alumni of the EWA, you, you get this network of people that you can communicate with and kind of understand and, and educate with better. And, and I was really impressed to see that you guys have that. <clears throat> Yeah, no, it's, it's excellent. And particularly as, you know, we've gone more online, and there's more international alumni. And, and that's where it's nice, you know, if you're in a certain area and you want to meet someone for a drink or you want to get advice on what's the best whiskey bar to go to, like there's that as well as just sharing, oh, okay, I've just bought this whiskey, you know, give me some hints or, you know, I need to buy this oh, yeah. for someone. But there's also the, the element of... Um, they can share their experiences on courses. So if they've done one course and they're thinking of doing another course, they can just say, has anyone done this course? Which obviously some people will have. And, you know, how did you find it? Any, you know, any tips or would you recommend this is the area I want to specialize in? Do you have any recommendations on which course or which module to pick? So it's a, it's a great resource uh, for, for everyone that's gone through one of our, one of our courses. Right. I was curious, do do any of your instructors or anybody uh, on the team, do they ever frequent the alumni channel and, and go in there and, and co communicate and get involved in conversations? So they haven't done yet because we've it, it's really just sort of grown in the last four months. And we're very aware that we need to get more experts coming in and giving their insight as added value. So it's something we're looking at starting after the summer where we have, you know, an expert come in and either answer, answer questions on a particular topic or give, you know, a short, not lecture, but a short talk on a particular area. And, and then, you know, that can start discussions thereafter and, and they, they would be available to chat on any sort of questions that are outstanding. I think we have something similar for our, our YouTube channel. It's called a Discord server, and it's just like an instant messaging type server, if you will. And some of the side conversations that go on amongst the people in there are uh, honestly very educational. And it's funny to see that they start becoming close and they maybe get together to do their own tastings or share, okay. you know, they're sharing whiskey samples and whatnot. It, it really has helped us learn right <laughs> yeah yeah so there's yeah. a there's actually a couple of comments just based on what we just talked about i wanted to show this from gerben that he just downloaded the tasting uh information from the academy and so it's like that's great to see right so that, that's good and um question from uh matthew um read well enough in english but it's more difficult to understand voice is there any foreign language uh conversions that that are planned or are going on with that so, uh, well, no, that, that's a good point because our certificate in Scotch whiskey has been translated into five languages, I think, one of which is actually French. Um, and we're it, looking at increasing that and then obviously starting on the certificate in Irish whiskey and getting that translated. But we're okay, also, um, one other thing that we're starting after the summer is we've handpicked a couple of um, wine and spirits educators who are in different countries and they once they have gone through our educator program they will be able to teach in person our certificate in scotch and certificate in irish whiskey so that gives the benefit of having it in the native language if it's not english but it also allows them that the candidates to ask questions real time and of course you can add in the all important element of tasting which just makes it much more fun and right. uh, well, you know yeah that was another question that gerben had earlier uh, does the course on site include tasting? Uh, so the Scotch, the certificate in Scotch doesn't have any tasting element. Um, we right. talk you through it, but we don't offer any tasting packs. The certificate in Irish whiskey, there is a, a tasting element to it. You, you would buy the samples separately, um, but there is a module where Matt, the Irish whiskey experts, take you through the, the different uh, categories of Irish whiskey. Okay. And our um, online version of the diploma in single malt, there's a big tasting element. You, We have a, a, a cut off two weeks before the start date to allow us to get the samples to you in time. There's a, a live world whiskies tasting. Uh, um, on week three, it's a three week course. And on week three, you have a live world whiskey tasting. And then there is a sensory assessment as part of the final assessment. So you get given 
um, nine, you get sent nine samples that are all just numbered and, and that's your sensory assessment. Oh, that sounds challenging. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. The, the, the one thing that I've found is the most humbling is blind samples. I, you no. think you know everything there is about a whiskey, and then you get it sent, you know, blind sampled, and you're way off. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll definitely you know bring you back down to earth. Um, but very exciting, and that's really a good way to to, to provide samples to folks. Um, you mentioned an Irish portion, so the Scotch. Uh, single malt um, was first. That's your first course that you guys came out with, right? Um, but you've now you're you're doing one in Irish. What's uh, what's on the horizon? Are you planning to do other spirits, or why did you choose to go to Irish whiskey? Why was that the next um, step? I think well. It's because, I mean, it's a very fast growing category. I think back in 2010, they maybe had four distilleries and now they've got over 38. So, and, and you know, more and more are coming. Yeah. And it was a an area, we share a, quite a similar history and, you know, we're very close brothers in, in the development of single malt over here. And it's an area that as I started to learn about it, I thought, I thought I, it would be, pretty much the same as scotch obviously shows my ignorance because it's completely different and the, the more I learned about it I thought wow this is really interesting and so we started creating the course back in October 2019 and it wasn't launched until March this year and so it's been a uh, we work with fantastic people Finn who wrote the history module he's actually doing a PhD in ancient mash bills in conjunction with Bowen Distillery what? so I know uh, amazing yeah, um, and then Matt Healy was the Irish expert who wrote the, the rest of the course and is such a passionate, young, knowledgeable guy that it was a real, it was such a pleasure working with them. And I'm so proud of the course because there's so much to Irish whiskey that to someone like me who knew nothing, it was just mind blowing. They, uh, they, they, have, they, have, they have similar categories, but then they have this sort of catch all category where there's very few restrictions on what grains they use. And it comes on, as long as they stick to the other um, sort of uh, like legal things, it can still be called Irish whiskey. And so that allows so much innovation with that, with the different grains comes different equipment utilized. And obviously they also have the, the very different um, sort of aspect from scotch in that they don't have to use oak. So there'll be, you know, there's lots of experiments going on with cherry wood, acacia, yeah um and chestnut wood so it's a it's a really exciting category i can't believe how much it's boomed in the last 10 years i mean yeah. i you know i i actually have seen a lot more irishes on the shelves i'm like where did this come from what is this i i've never heard of this why you know, yeah. but i can see why it's a, a good step for you you know the whiskey academy um Following, now I wanted to talk about the modules. The uh, Irish one is on a new platform. So there's going to be a different look and feel from that course than the current Scotch one, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a slightly different platform where um, it's, it, it, it runs, the course runs slightly differently. Um, but for the candidate, it's, it's exactly the same learning experience. And the amount of detail is, uh, is incredible. We have a lot of video in it as well. And there's obviously also the quizzes throughout to make sure that you've learned and, and taken on board the knowledge that has just been shared in that, in that module. So we've been talking for the last 25 minutes about, you know, kind of, your courses and your history and Scott and learning about whiskey in general. So one of the things that always it was interesting to me is how people view whiskey education from a different perspective. Ours was a consumer perspective, you know, what tastes good, what made it taste like that. Um, what is your experience with kind of the, the broader idea of, of whiskey education from consumers to bartenders to distillers? What right. kind of what, is the gap in that range and what are, what are each type of um, learners looking for in, in their education? So I think um, from, from my experience, hospitality, like bartenders and sommeliers, and as well as the industry there, they know they want to know more. 
because they are front facing the consumer, the consumer is becoming more knowledgeable. They want to be able to, you know, be the most knowledgeable and they also want to be able to sort of package up their brand stories or whatever tasting they're doing. And, you know, in a really engaging format. And in order to do that, the more knowledge you have, the easier it is to knit together, you know, facts and the brand side, or if you're trying to upsell a, a particular whiskey, it's much easier to convey that uh, if, if you've got a real depth of knowledge. Um, I think from the enthusiast side, and this is where I've been, you know, really encouraged by some of the feedback, is that they, uh, very often they don't, they, they don't quite, uh, until you start trying to learn about right. things, you don't sort of understand how much more there is to learn. And it's when they get to that stage that they're really asking questions like, you know, why does fermentation length have, you know, can have such an impact on the flavor or why this, why that? And that's when it's really exciting that they then start, you know, asking more and more questions. And that's when you're like, brilliant, you're really on your education journey now. And, you know, they just want to, learn as much as possible you said a word that, that caught my attention journey we've said we've been on a journey for six years and because yep. it really is uh, and i can tell you that you really start to appreciate you know the spirit more the more you learn about it and it, it actually i don't want to say it gets easier but it actually gets more interesting more fun you you want more you you it, you kind of get hook line and sinker and get caught into it really um, but it's taken us six years to get where we are now and still taking your course. There were a few things in there. I was like, yeah. you know, aha moments like, oh, yeah, no kidding. And even the, the things that I knew, it was great to be refreshed on those things, to actually go through it and think about it again and again, because whiskey making is whiskey making. Right. I mean, here in the States, everybody's talking about bourbon, you know, yeah, that's a American single malt. But at the end of the day, they're still distilling. They're still making spirit. Yeah, so on our um, site, there's a character that looks a lot like me called Doctor. That we call Doctor Scotch, <laughs> and this the, it, it came exactly from that where we're talking about something and we're talking about chill filtering. It's like, oh, talk to us about chill filtering. And, what is you know, it? And and the the equipment that's used and the temperatures that are used and why it's used and does it really make a difference and all those kind of things. So we will we we will find a topic and we'll kind of do these deep dives on a single topic. But it's only, you know, one little portion of that whole bottling uh, area. So it's, it's right. really interesting. So we, we've got these little deep dives, but I think your course kind of does a little bit better at rounding everything over. And it, well, it, and it's I, a long yeah. thing. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I think one thing um, that I hope our courses have achieved and from the feedback they have is that we've taken the knowledge and we've put it into a really accessible and engaging format. Um, we recently did the pilot course for the online diploma and single malt and used quite a lot of whiskey experts for the pilot just mm -hmm. to, to test it out. And they all said, you know, if when I started my whiskey education journey, this information could have been positioned and, and offered in such a sort of, you know, together package, they would have right. saved months and years. Because it's not, you know, the knowledge is out there, it, it's fact. It's just putting it in into a, a, a mode of delivery that puts it in front of the candidate, challenges them to recall it so they really know that they've got it ingrained into them and then test them at the end. And I think that's one of the, the great things about our courses is whichever course it is, whatever level it is, it's putting it all together. So this is your resource for that, for that sort of, you know, area of, of knowledge. Yeah. For, so for those of, that may have joined late, um, we're talking right now with Kirstie McCarroll, founder of the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, right. talking about Edinburgh Whiskey Academy specifically, but in general, uh, whiskey education and why why you should be like, participating in that. Why it's important to you, whether you're a brand ambassador or just a, a whiskey enthusiast, or maybe just getting into whiskey and you know you get your first bottle of Johnny Walker Black, like you said. Yep. Who knows? Maybe you've been doing this for 20 years. And maybe you've been doing it for 20 minutes. Why you should be interested in what the EWA has to offer which there's a lot to offer. Yeah, I, that, that Irish course is, is, does interest me because I we did actually did a, a live where we talked through the kind of the Scotch and the Irish differences. But I think the uh, application of those differences, I think, is where the, the rubber meets the road. And it would be really interesting to kind of understand 
where they can go with that relative to that. I mean, you, we talked the same thing with bourbons. They have a different mash bill. They have different uh, casking requirements and those kind of things. So those differences are what make it different. I mean, difference make it different, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, so it, you can always almost always taste the bourbon as, yeah, that tastes like a bourbon to me. Right. But there's, there's actually a lot that can be done within that bourbon range that we're just starting to learn and experience. Yeah. So yeah. we're, we're, there's a couple of things that I want to ask here, but before I get off, <laughs> uh -oh. off track, I, I, there, you said another word that I don't think we've really got into uh, when it comes to the course and the education. You said test. There's a test at the end that I have to pass. Is this, you know, is there a cutoff here? Do, do I need to <laughs> stress out and worry or? <laughs> so um, for the certificate in Scotch and certificate in Irish, there is an assessment at the end that you do online. It's more for self uh, you know, you're, you're testing yourself. Whereas if you want to take the SQA um, certification, then there is an additional test, which we do mm. on Zoom with you. Um, it's a screen share test and you have to achieve over 70% off, off all modules um, in order to, to pass the assessment. With the diploma in single malt, there is, and I'm sure Eric, if he's still there, will be able to uh, testify mm. to this. There is quite a hard assessment at the end. It's, it's two hours long and it covers all seven modules and you need to achieve over 60% in each module in order to um, get the diploma. But oh, if great. there is if there is one module that you don't achieve the required amount, then there's there's no cost for retake. We you know we're really working with you to to get you to achieve this qualification. Uh, we offer updated tutorials with you and one of our teachers to check that you know you've got the knowledge learned for that module. So it's it's it it may sound daunting, but it's <laughs> as undaunting as 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 it can be. So nobody's walking by with a ruler and smacking you on the back of the knuckles. No. You <laughs> <laughs> so Tom, I wanted to thank everyone. Thank you, Kirsty, for coming in um, and and sharing, you know, passion with whiskey and, and with the community. It's, I think everybody is everybody that's on. All we have thirty seven people watching live right now. Everybody is interested in learning about right. whiskey. So. Yeah. Definitely. And thank you, Tom. I know when you zoom out and it's just her, I want to, we'll take a breather here off the content and okay. let her take a second, but zoom out to her. And I want, there's a really big bottle back there. <laughs> um, yes. Tell me what, what's, what's that about? So that is the Ardbeg Alligator. Um, it was a tasting we did in Stockholm and Mickey Heads brought it over, who's the old uh, or now recently retired um, Ardbeg manager. And he brought it over and it was obviously finished. And at, at the end of the tasting, and I said, oh, you know, could I take this home? So uh, I took that on the night train back to our house off in northern Sweden. And then it came over on the plane over here. And, and amazingly, it's still in one piece. So, no, it's, it's an excellent, it's a committee release alligator. Um, Does it still smell like the bottle or did you rinse it out? Oh, no, no, no. It still smells. Yep. Oh, nice. And it's a 175. It's a big bottle. It's yep. four liters. Uh, Man, yep. that's a party bottle right oh, you, there. You said it was I how many liters is it? I think it's four liters. Four um, liters. Man. So it's big. Yeah. I can't. Four and a half. Four and a half liters. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty uh, neat. I like to I like to look at I had that's a good little break just for us to catch our breath here and and you know take a, a break. I, I had to point that out because I will tell you the people that watch the show, they're zooming into your background. They want to yeah. see the whiskey that's yeah. behind you. Which bottles do you have <laughs> behind you? Yeah. So, so look at all the papers and samples. Right. We have, yeah, and we have some interesting ones that form part of our diploma in the art of tasting. We're really lucky in that we share good relationships with quite a few of the uh, distilleries and so we've got some feints and four shots there as well which people knows in the diploma and we've got different new makes here and uh i haven't got them here but we've got different age spirits as well that we that we knows throughout that diploma that's neat i think the new make uh samples would be incredible because i i think a lot of people over it gets overlooked by the maturation is that the mm -hmm. distinct differences between the distilleries new makes and you know yeah. sometimes the finish and the maturation is so powerful that it just overwashes that distillery's signature new make um so to get it you know straight in the sample is is a really cool thing to do no totally and particularly when you've 
spent you know some time discussing the different areas in the production process uh, with maturation where you can create flavor and where you can sort of manipulate it slightly it's it's really hard to then judge that on a sort of comparison level when when they've been in in a cask for over 10 years so that's where the new makes great because you have a much more sort of raw uh introduction into it yeah we've we've uh done some tastings where we'll take um, some brand bottles and some independent bottlers and you you taste them in a similar setting to right. try and pull out what you think is the yeah. the this distillate character out of those if you can sometimes you can sometimes you can't yeah I, that's fun to me though. It is because uh, that's the character it. of that distillery, right? But we've we've argued, and I don't know if anyone's ever proven it, but how, you know how much um, flavor comes from that distillate compared to the maturation, the wood, you know. And, and I guess that's subject to change, but you know, for yeah. for uh, people's interpretation. I think so. I mean, I think um, if you, I, th I think most of the the flavor development comes from the maturation side. However, they're all pieces of a jigsaw. And if you didn't have that quality of new make that goes into the cask, you wouldn't have that end result. And in order to get that quality of new make, you have to then have, you know, that barley or, you know, that, um, you know, fermentation length or whatever it is in order to get that quality to start with. So they all go in hand in hand. Yeah, I think actually the Scotch whiskey course um, had a good discussion of the four shots and the, and those it kind did. of things and how, how you work through that and and what you can do with those. I think those are great. That was something I actually learned a lot on. So Tom Marr also has a question. Do any of the courses cover the wood used for maturation and the range of finishing and maturation casts that are used? Rum, bourbon, red wine, Madeira, sherry, any of those kind of discussions? So we have one module, uh, which is a sort of standalone module called Focus on Flavor. And that very much drills down into the different areas of flavor origination during the production process and then looks heavily at oak. Um, so there we discuss the, the other flavors that can come from different cask finishes. Um, and it looks in detail at the effect that charring and toasting can have, as well as other elements to do with, with the maturation side. We are, though, in the process of developing a, a module on um, oak-derived aromas, and that will be a very in-depth look. Not so much. It's a, actually an interesting point we should maybe sort of dig deeper into other cast types as well. But that very much drills down into the, the components that are in oak that are drawn out through whatever way in, and then um, are adopted into the, the whiskey flavor. And there's sure. been some changes though. The SWA actually, you know, they kind of loosened up the, the mm -hmm. restriction there. And now there's some different casks that are going to start seeing their ways into bottles, right? I, I think Dewar's has got a couple of them out, whether it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, finishes or maturations that I kind of question like, well, I don't know if I'd be putting my scotch in the, 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 the mascala cask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so it, it, I think there is definitely some opportunity for some modules on, I don't want to say risque maturations, but new ones now that that's kind yeah. of opened up a little bit. Right. Yeah, um, no, totally. And it's just sort of also keeping up. There's so many um, interesting innovations. There's a big focus on yeast. Uh, there's a big discussion about terroir. And, you know, and then obviously there's new casks. So there's there's a whole, there's just so much material that, uh, you know, we're desperate to get to get content out on. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to help with that. that. That's a lot of fun. I can do some research <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Scotch can make a, Dr. Scotch guess, can make an appearance. So I also, we got, just got a super chat from Daniel. He says, greetings from Columbia. He enjoyed the certificate in Scotch whiskey and already purchased the online diploma in single malt whiskey. It's a great job. So brilliant. hopefully people, other people will um, go as well. We've had lots of discussions and, and people are, are seeing this for the first time. If you are great, if not, let us know if you've participated in any of these courses and, and what you thought of them. That's kind of the, the discussion here as well. Yeah, I'd love to see more comments about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking uh, on the, the maturation and where we're, you know, the different casks that are out there and available uh, to be used now. When, on the educational portion, because that's such a new thing that's changed, and I talked to asked you about the SWA, do you guys cover, is there a module that actually covers some of the actual specific rules and regulations or laws? You know, what what really makes scotch scotch according to the SWA as opposed to 
Irish has their own set of rules. Do you break into those in your modules or? So kind of yes. Lightning? In the business of whiskey module, we talk about the Scotch whiskey, Scotch whiskey regulations, two thousand and nine, um, mm -hmm. and they they are the last sort of definition as to the categories and stuff. So we do go into detail in that, um, and then in the online diploma, you also look at the environmental. Um, promises and uh, regulations that they have to adhere to by such and such a date uh, in reducing their, um, you know, sort of negative emissions to the environment. Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, when you get into those rules and they do change a, a little bit, actually on our show, I'm constantly having to go out and research some of them to find out, you know, I don't want to say something incorrect, although I do all the time. Um, but I, I find that there are definitely additions when you read the, the sub paragraphs, A, B, and C, you can see the, uh, how they've grown. You know, it used to be, you weren't allowed to move scotch out of Scotland in a wood <laughs> barrel, but then they made another line underneath it and said, if it's going to be in a glass bottle, it has to be labeled for retail. You know, you, they, you can see how they've kind of figured their way through this. And I think scotch is definitely one of the most controlled. Uh, Japan uh, just came yeah. out with their yeah. own. New you Zealand. Know, just yeah. Came out legal own. Set. And so let's talk about the, the future on where you're going. You, yeah. You're obviously go, going into Irish. Do you have plans to break into a bourbon? Pretty hot over here in the United States. I'm pretty hot saying. in the UK too. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hot over yeah. there too. Um, so yeah, no, we actually um, started a, a podcast series, and we spoke to Colin Blake of uh, Moonshine University, who does the Bourbon Steward. Yep. And just talking of bourbon, he, I was asking him what bourbons he would recommend, and he recommended Willet. And so we yeah. bought a huge, and as you can see, we enjoyed it a lot. So no bourbon <laughs> is something I would love to. Yeah. Love to learn more about and, but like you say, also American single malt whiskey is a really growing category and yeah. really interested in, uh, you know, getting some content out on that as well. So there's, there's loads of areas of, of whiskey that we're interested in, you know, putting out, whether that's a free resource or a blog post, or it, we create a, a, a module or a course. I'm not sure yet. At the moment, we're just sort of focusing on getting our online diploma up and running because like I say the first course which which is sold out um, starts on the 30th of July so that would be great we do it in different time zones so you know obviously anyone can join but we're trying to really make it as easy as possible for for people from all over the world to slot into their work schedules so I think we'll we'll sort of focus on that getting that up and running efficiently in the next couple of months and then in the autumn we'll look at you know, creating some more courses. We've got, like I say, this module on oak derived aromas, and then there's another one on fermentation and yeast that's under development at the moment that will be coming out in the autumn. Um, and and then just keeping going with the free resources, because like you say, it is, you know, it's, it's an investment in education and it may not be the right time for lots of people, but that's not to stop them you know, not learning. So that's why we're really trying to get as many free resources out to open them up to the world of whiskey education, really enhance their appreciation of the whiskies that they're drinking. And then hopefully at some point in the future, they'll be able to, you know, take a course. The July 30th course is online, right? So you're, you're technically yes. right now not doing in-person courses because no. of we are the last year oh you are no yeah no we started um two weeks ago we did our first course since last september so which oh, was wow. excellent okay. and uh, normally we have you know at least 35 percent international students and so it was a real novelty for the first time to have a hundred percent british um so wow. so no it was great it was great to get back to the classroom we've got another course on the 9th of july and then we start properly from september face to face where i think we have to two a month until December. Okay, can I ask, what is your frequency? Are, so those, uh, do you typically sell out or are those hard to get into? Uh, post, uh, sorry, pre-COVID we sold out um, because we restrict numbers. We have um, a yeah. limit of 16 per course just so that you get you know a more one-to-one -one experience. And we only typically ran them once a month. Um, now quite a few are sold out um, I think yeah. we've still got some spaces on the other ones, but we've re we've had to reduce capacity because of social distancing. Um, oh, yeah. So I think it will be quite hard to get on them. But equally, there are some spaces, but people 
it's you know international people obviously at the moment everyone's slightly just waiting to see what happens so um but uh, there are is there, are there any plans to move the course to countries that may not be able to travel or any of those kind of things yes definitely so yeah. we're actually in very loose discussions at looking at coming over to America next summer. Um, we are deciding that <laughs> in September so that there's okay. plenty of time to plan and we'll, we'll advertise well in advance. Um, and then also Ireland, we're looking at going over to do a sort of Irish version of our diploma in the art of tasting whiskey, where we really, you know, sort of, oh, wow. uh, deconstruct Irish whiskey as opposed to scotch. Um, so we'll, we're, we're looking at doing that and that's that's it for now. Wow, I'm, I'm actually interested in that one. I, you know, a lot of our subscribers have asked us before when we're gonna get into bourbons or other spirits and we are dabbling in the bourbon a little bit. Um, but honestly, if it were up to me, my interest, uh, I love scotch, that's my foundation, but mm -hmm. I am interested in what's going on in the Irish side of things. Um, mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy Irish whiskey too. And so there's a lot of movement there and it's exciting. And, you know, I would, <laughs> I would love to, to get into that course. One of our viewers did ask if there's a group that would be consider that would consider taking a module because he would like a, a learning buddy, if you will. So, Oh. Let's talk about that for a hot second. Uh, Gerben, of course, there's probably someone that would love to sign up with you on our Discord channel if you threw that question out there. But if there's not, let's throw it to Kirsty and say, you know, I think that the academy kind of provides that it, because you're going through it in a group in, in, in your courses, right? So, um, so not on the certificate in Scotch or certificate in Irish. They're very much sort of self-study at your own pace, okay. at your own time. Whereas the diploma you go through in a group and, you know, we have introductions. There'll be a WhatsApp group where you can chat uh, as you go through the work together. And so that's very much done. But it's actually a really good point. Um, it might be an idea to to start, although, you know, it's not a prerequisite because you do it at your own pace it might be nice to see if people would like to start the certificates at the same time and and work through it together albeit you know virtually um it's it's a nice idea i will definitely think about that i think it, it's i know i learn better that way when i have someone to chew yeah. on it with and question and i didn't quite understand it or they they see it from a different angle a different perspective and sometimes that really helps um, it's helped us on our journey. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Are there any other good comments before? I don't want to. I don't want to overlook all that because we're going to get into try to lighten up a little bit. We've yeah, really there's been lot, hitting lots of discussion. <laughs> you know, and quite honestly, it's, it's interesting. A lot of the comments are um, new new faces, and they're talking about whiskey together. And so it's kind of like they're just chatting about whiskey. It's really neat talking about. They talked a lot about the alligator. And how that was before a lot of our times. It was before our time in whiskey. Yeah, I don't know and, anything. And about that it. was that was a really interesting uh, discussion that that was co that covered through that. So it was, that was neat to see. Um, I think though the I alligator. Know. Sorry to interrupt, but the alligator is a great example of where a particular release can really um, sort of ignite your your curiosity because I was obviously working for Ardbeg at the time of Alligator and I remember hearing you know that it was charred to a grade four and this gave it this massively phenolic flavor and you know blah blah and I was thinking how how can this be you know and that's where <laughs> releases like that sometimes there's one or two that come along and it really makes you question everything rather than just you know what am i right. tasting it makes you question your knowledge on so many things in a really positive way where you're like wow you know i didn't know this could happen this highlights how little i knew about the charring regime for example and then that really you know is just the beginning of opening up such an interesting world so mm -hmm. yeah the, the alligator to me is a very sort of special whiskey in that it did really sort of set me on my path of wanting to to learn as much as possible that's neat. You mean at eight years old, nosing uh, uh, Glenmo <laughs> didn't? I, I'm a little bit envious I'm, I'm of that. I'm didn't yeah, go well. Most eight-year-olds are like, oh, yuck. <laughs> you know, thinking about your history, though. So, you know, your, your family bloodline um, was actually distilling whiskey when it was still illegal. I do believe I heard you said 1820, so. <laughs> 1820s, yeah. No, well, it was, yeah, around about sort of 1825, I think, that it was all uh, legalized. But yes, um, I don't think we had, to our knowledge, any illicit 
stills going on in Scotland. <laughs> but, uh, uh -huh. but yeah, no, it's it's been yeah. a, a long time. It was a long time ago. Well, it was a long time. I'm sure that you could get away with saying it was now and not getting any trouble, right? Yeah. I, Statue of limitations. Yeah. <laughs> probably. So that's that's your your mother's side, and then on your father's yeah. side, he's actually in the whiskey industry too. So your you know your background really kind of led you to come here anyway. You, I don't Pretty I don't much. want to say you got sidetracked as a paramedic because I'm sure that was a very <laughs> rewarding experience, <laughs> but it was almost like you were destined to end up in this industry in some way, shape, or form. No, totally. And I think that was one of the the really nice things about uh, about my upbringing was that I was very much, um, my dad was very much involved when it was, there was such a focus on craft. Single malt wasn't, you know, the massive, it didn't have the huge status that it has now. They, they really, you know, there was a handful of independents that really drove that category forward during the, mm -hmm. well, starting from the late 60s. And such an interesting time where they really had to be, very tenacious and and really believe in what they were doing because it was all about blends at that time and i think you know to have been introduced to single malt in such an accessible way and to have also experienced that you know tenacity and self-belief from my dad and you know through glenn morangy and his belief that single malt really should be its own category and you know whiskey tastings didn't really even exist then so it was very much a a new area for 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 everyone when when it sort of came out onto the world stage and so i think that's very much um helped me in my sort of passion of trying to drive this academy and, and really put whiskey education on the map that's great yeah it's a good background it, it fits it's all it's destiny yeah. we'll say that yeah. um for those that have joined late and we you know we've had people coming in and coming out and, and leaving and whatnot but um Christine McCarrow is the founder of the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. And if you just joined and we have to go back and hit the, the replay on to find out what this is all about, because there's a lot to dive into. Yep. Um, and we've covered, I think, everything we want to. But I, I want to make sure that everybody that's watching and for those watching the replay in the future, the, uh, she has been gracious to offer a 15 percent discount code to to those and we will add the discount code if you will to the description of this video yes, after the video um we were saving it for then but uh, i think that uh, people will be very thankful for that christy i know i enjoyed the course and i'm looking at that irish one next um, yeah i may have did that one. personally that's just for me i don't know if i'm ready to go through the uh the test on the sqa side i the certificate I might be interested in that that sounds like up my alley <laughs> I'm kind of mm. done with school. I don't want to be drilled on stuff, but uh, it, I want the content. I want to learn. Um, yeah. But the way we end our, our show with our guests, and we kind of gave you a heads up this was coming. We didn't tell you the questions, but we told you this was going to happen, <laughs> is we like to put our guests on a little bit of a hot seat. And the purpose of this is to get to know you um, outside of the industry yes. well, you know who are you what drives you what kind of person are you and it kind of helps us understand maybe why you're doing what you're doing so we've got five questions we call it the hot seat um i don't think you're going to have a problem answering any of them but if you we've never had anybody pass on any yet but you can't if you do it <laughs> <But it's fun. laughs> okay. so andrew pick one of the five all right um so we got five questions here what number one what is your favorite vacation spot oh gosh um i'd have to say the west coast of scotland sounds very dull but okay. uh um when when the weather's in it it's absolutely i mean there's amazing beaches stunning scenery and there's not a soul in sight so i'd have to say oh. the west coast of scotland very good. Interesting. Right. Keeping it close. Keeping Keep it close it to home. home. Yeah. All right. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I thought there was going to be a different answer because especially someone that's been to, you know, ski country in the mountains. And, <laughs> okay. Um, so who's your favorite superhero? Um, I'm not sure if he qualifies as a superhero, but it would probably be Peter Pan. <laughs> okay. Oh, the true story of Peter Pan. He's a little mischievous. <laughs> okay. That tells me a little bit about you. <laughs> All right. So uh, aligned with that, what do you want to be when you grow up? What, um, what, did, you, what, did, what did you want to be when you were growing up, when you were a kid, you know? Oh, when I, uh, I wanted to be a cook. A really? Cook. 
Yeah. And why is that? Why? Just, I loved cooking and uh, I think I've always sort of indirectly loved flavours and matching flavours together. And I always, I was never very good at cooking, but I always <laughs> wanted to be a cook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, cool. so that's what you want to be. Um, I'm going to leave you with that one and I'm going to go with favourite movie of all time. Oh, uh, this is very easy. It has to be out of Africa. I think uh, it's it was a, a massive, I, I watched it when I was younger and it prompted me to go traveling in Africa when I was 18 and it was just a really magical time and I absolutely love that movie. And you've been to Africa? Yes, yeah. Oh, and it still wasn't her favorite vacation place. Okay. I think it was at that it. time, it was, it was 20, oh, nearly 20 years ago and it was just a, you know, you just left school, it was brilliant, um, but I wouldn't, Oh, no, anyway. Well, it put a smile on your face. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Your memories are there. That's for sure. Yeah. So last one, I think it's pretty simple, but it could be quite controversial. It can be. Are you a cat person, a dog person, or a no pet person? Oh, dog. Oh. Through and through dogs. Yes. We have a big dog. He's not, I was expecting him to barge in at some time, but uh, <laughs> no, we're, we, we're very doggy. Grown up with them all my life and absolutely adore them. So a follow-up, favorite breed? Uh, well, probably if I had to pick one, it would be a Yemptund, which is a Swedish elk hound. But we, uh, this current dog is is a mongrel. He's a rescue. And we've had quite a few rescue, rescues who just are their own characters. So I don't, I don't have a sort of favorite breed. But if I had to have a breed, it would be a Yemptund. I'm a dog wow. person myself, so I, I can I can relate to you on that. So that wasn't Very too good. difficult. You're not yes. sweating, are you? No, 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 no. <laughs> good. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah. So listen, we've had a great conversation with you. Yes. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your background, your history, and your passion, um, and what the uh, Whiskey Academy is all about, what you do, why you do it, where it came from, and where you're going with it. I hope everybody that's watched has gotten some. I know they have. And the, the replay will be out there. Um, the discount code will be added to the description of the video for those watching. If you're interested, there has been a lot of comments, Christy, about people that have completed courses or signing up for new ones. So very excited about that. Um, if you ever do come to this side of the pond and step foot in the States, we need to know about it. Uh, yes. Would love to get together. To if you're going to do a course, definitely let us know about that. We could um, fill that up probably pretty easily with the people online right here. So. Yeah, that's quite uh, – and and I'm sure if Eric's still on, he would love to uh, to cross paths as well. But mm -hmm. um, we've had a really good time. Thank you so much for coming on the show, being our guest. Um, I hope it wasn't too stressful for you. You did wonderful in sharing everything that we needed to know about um, – your incredible academy, and we look forward to seeing what you do with it. Well, thanks so much, and thanks so much for inviting me on. And uh, hopefully, we'll get to meet in person, either over here or or over in America. That'd be great. I would hope it's in that house. I forget yeah. America. Yeah. I want to come there. Maybe you can show us the west coast of Scotland. I would. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But thank you so much. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to close up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Three, two. One.